Now I've made boxes before on this channel, so I'm not gonna be up on a soapbox for this video, but I wanted to try and create something that was a little bit more freeform, a sandbox, if you will. Box in my day, you weren't limited to just wooden boxes, so let's get box to basics and use some silicone and resin. And in the end, you'll have something that looks like a million box. Now that we've fully boxed out the people who don't like puns, we can get into the video. Now, I've made boxes before, but they were always made out of wood and they were pre-made boxes, and I thought I wanted to make something from scratch, and I like to make things out of resin, but I also like the wood look, so I thought I could combine the two by taking these wooden boxes and creating some molds out of silicone for them. And I also found a good use for this old failed project box from a few videos back. I thought we could use this and make a mold out of this and try and make a resin box out of this one, so that way it now has a purpose and I don't have to feel bad throwing it away. First things first, I wanted these boxes to be stackable so this little nib on the top wasn't going to work for me. I tried to take a scraper and pull it off or a knife and that wasn't working so I ended up using my hobby clippers and just snapping them right off. It's only held on by super glue or some weaker form of glue so it wasn't all that hard. Now you could sand them down if you wanted to. I kind of tried to make a little makeshift sander out of my pottery wheel from my previous video and just taping some sandpaper down to it. I'm not worried about the top where the nib was all that much. I sanded it a little bit but mostly I just wanted to get some of the higher parts of the wood off of there because I thought they might get stuck in the silicone and cause problems. I'm not actually trying to remove the wood grain, just make it a little bit smoother than had I done no sanding on it. Now for the box, I had to be really careful and this is why I don't really recommend this because as I was doing it, it caught on the sandpaper and the box went flying. So not safe, don't try and make your own disc sander, just sand it by hand, it was a bad idea. But I've also got these little bits of glue in this old black box, which I would not like to have be recreated in the resin, so I thought I could make a really even surface on it with a quick casting resin, which we've never used on this channel, so I thought, hey, let's give it a shot. First off, it is far more liquid than I expected this to be. Most of my resin has one very liquid half and one kind of thicker half. Nah, this is basically water on both sides, so I was not prepared to work with that, and it kind of came out pretty quickly. Either way, we have enough resin to get mix in here. You can see it starts off yellow, then turns white, and then becomes clear, and now you're ready to pour. We don't have much time before it starts hardening so we gotta go pretty quick with this pour. We wouldn't have time to pressurize this stuff or vacuum it out if we wanted to. It cures extremely quickly, but it's not clear anyway. We're just trying to get a flat surface, so we pour a nice even layer and leave this on an even workspace. I left this shot in here because this is real time. This isn't sped up for how quickly this stuff cures. In three minutes, it's hard enough to touch it, and then at 10 minutes, it's good to go. That is real time it turning white right there and solidifying, which I just thought was super cool. Now we can actually start making the mold for all of these while that sits there and cures. So we've got a couple different things that we're gonna use for the molds. I'm using paper plates and these clear plastic cups. They are just about the right size for us to not waste a ton of silicones for each of these molds as we make them. So I'm gonna put the cups down onto the plate with some hot glue, enough to kind of seal it in so that we're not going to actually lose any of the silicone out the sides. So you wanna make sure you coat it in a lot of hot glue. I cut the rest or the excess out with some scissors and then I go around once more with hot glue to really make sure that we're not gonna have any uh, leaks of silicone. Even though I do that, that does actually happen later, and I'll show you a quick fix for that if it does start happening to you. So I set up two molds like that for the lids, but the ones where I'm actually using the bottom part of the circular boxes, I want to glue those down first because they're very hard to actually get into the cups after you've glued the cups down, so it's better to do them in the very beginning. So after I set them down, I put the hot glue on the cups, set them around, cut out the outside just the same way that we did before. Uh, that way there's no excess plate that makes it hard to handle these things. And then I put some hot glue around. I do the same thing for the other one. And now I have four separate molds, two lids and two bases of these round boxes. Then we can start actually cutting the cups so that we can put the lids in there and we'll cut the other parts of the cups so that we can reach in to pour some silicone. So I cut it with a box cutter and then take some scissors around. There's enough room for me to put the lids in and I wanted to do this that way I could kind of control where I put the lids after I set the cups down. If you wanted to do it the same way as the other ones where you just glue the lids and then put the cups over, that works totally fine. I'm not worried about hot glue being all over these things around the top because we're actually going to leave the top as open face since it's going to be a flat surface. I don't really need to do a two-part molds for the bottom of these or the top of the lids, but I'm going to cut out enough 
to where there's a little bit of excess silicone on the top of the bottom parts of these molds, and those are set and good to go. Now, those cups work great. There's a lot of area around the outside, but it doesn't waste a ton of extra silicone as we pour it in, so we're gonna call those good. However, I don't have a rectangular shaped cup, so we gotta make one ourselves for these boxes. We have to make a custom mold, and we're gonna use some packing tape and some dollar store little foam board like you would for an old school project. Now, that's great for terrain for D&D, &D, and it's also great for making little temporary molds because it's super cheap. It costs like a dollar for a whole thing like this. And if you cover one surface in packing tape, silicone will not stick to it. Thank you, Peter Brown, for that lesson. So as long as the outside of packing tape is touching wherever silicone is going to be touching, you're good to go. Because if silicone is touching that foam, it is just going to rip up and you're going to have a very hard time getting that out of the mold. So we have a base and four walls for each of these molds, and we're going to seal them together with some hot glue. We're trying to make an airtight seal the same way we did with our cups, except this time we're making four walls. There's no real right or wrong way to do this, and I don't really need to give you dimensions because your box is probably going to be a different size than my box. Ideally, you just want to leave enough of a gap for there to be silicone around each side of your box. Now, as I'm gluing these, I'm actually taking hot glue up along the inner kind of corners. That way there's, again, a double layer of glue so that there's no chance of silicone pouring out the sides. Even so, whenever I do this, I always want to be doubly, triply sure. So I take extra packing tape and go around the outside because if silicone leaks in the middle of the night, I'll have to start all over and do this again. I'm also making an open face mold for these ones. So I'm going to glue the tops of the box here and the bottom of the larger side of the box down. And we've got ourselves all of the molds we need and we can actually get started pouring silicone now. I'm going to be using a bunch of different types of silicone in this video, not because any one has a particular advantage, but because it takes a lot of silicone and I pretty much had to use everything I had in my house. So for this first set, and which is going to be all the small round molds, I'm going to be using Moldstar Slow 15. The only disadvantage to this one is it's not transparent, which normally matters for like dice making or something where you need to see the tiny parts, but it doesn't really matter here because we're not trying to see on the inside and we're not really cutting anything out. So honestly, if you can get this one cheaper than the sort of clear, go for it. I'm going to vacuum out my silicone just because I don't want there to be any bubbles and I want to be able to pressure cast these. You absolutely do not have to do this step. You could even pressurize the silicone, but I was going to be doing a large volume of stuff, so vacuuming it out just made more sense than trying to do it all in a pressure pot because I could do more in one day this way. After all the bubbles were removed from the silicone, it was time to pour. Remember, pour high and slowly. That way you don't incorporate any new bubbles into the silicone. You just spend all that time vacuuming it out. You don't want to add any more back in. I start by pouring over on the lids because they're not going to take much silicone. I leave maybe about four millimeters over the lids. That way there's a nice little base for the lids to sit on as we're pouring resin and pour the rest into the bottom halves of the cup. Now, I told you earlier, if it leaks, one thing that you can do to fix this, because I did have a leak in mine, is just take some packing tape and kind of pinch it off over the hole. That works enough to at least get the silicone to stay in there. It's not ideal, but it, it, it does work. Now we can move on to the actual box molds, which I'm going to use Sorta Clear 12. Again, no particular reason. It's just the silicone that I had on hand. I'm going to mix this up. Same thing. It's a one to one by volume ratio. We're going to do the exact same thing that we did before, which was use a vacuum chamber on it to remove the bubbles. That way these could be pressurized if we wanted to. However, I will say this is kind of a moot point because as of right now, I don't really have anything that I could fit these into within my pressure pot if I'm pouring the resin. So it's kind of a moot point, And I guess I didn't really need to do that on these box molds. Oh, well, I pour enough silicone again to leave a little bit of excess silicone over the top. The problem with the bottom parts of the cups and these box lids is there's just huge voids of silicone in the center. So much so that I had to actually use a different type of silicone to finish off the molds here. You can see there just wasn't enough for me to really be comfortable with these molds. I needed a little bit more. So I actually mixed types of silicones on this mold. So I had that sort of clear. And then I put a top layer of Dragon Skin 20. After the silicone cures, it's totally fine. Silicone will stick to silicone. So this is essentially just extending the mold to give me a better platform platform on the bottom of this big one, especially because this is the heaviest mold I was going to have. I wanted a nice platform. After those cure for about 12 hours, they are finally good to go and I can demold them. I just take my clippers, cut into the plastic, and then I can unwrap it all the way around. Now to demold these, I take an X-Acto knife and go around the top. 
I messed up on the first one. You can see I just cut enough out to kind of wriggle this thing out and pull it out, which left a lot of excess silicone that I had to kind of try and manually cut off. Don't do that. That makes it really hard and you get these little jagged edges on top. It's not good, but ooh man, can you see that wood grain that was left in the silicone? That's exactly what I was looking for. You wanna try and take your X-Acto knife and go right along the edge as smoothly as possible. That'll make a super easy and super clean looking mold line whenever you're pulling these things out. Now the silicone that gets stuck in the inside of the box, the little cup part, it, it creates this like suction and it takes three men and a baby's strength to actually pull that thing out of there and so it was tough. Afterwards I was happy enough that I actually played the bongos on the top of the new molds. If you don't play the bongos on them your results are absolutely gonna vary. I can't promise anything. Take your knife and cut the extra tape that you used and break open your custom made box to where you have your rectangular silicone molds for your rectangular larger box. Now we cut these out the same exact way. I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see what I was doing with the exacto knife as I go along. I just pull a little bit of the silicone back and take the knife right along the edge to try and get as straight of a cut as humanly possible and even then I errored a lot. I took a little selfie in front of it because I was happy that these molds were actually ready to go and came out good. I'm going to be using Pro Marine resin for this. There's no reason I'm using this over my normal Art and Glow. You can use any tabletop or casting resin. I can just get it cheaper by the gallon so I'm going to use it for bulk things like this. As I normally do I put a little bit of liquid silver glitter in there. It just makes any clear resin you're doing uh, pop and shine a little bit more than just a normal transparent clear and we're going to be using something called the Petri dish method with our alcohol inks. I'm using two types of blue, a kind of blue and a tealish green blue. And the way that works is you just put a drop of alcohol ink on some resin that's sitting there and it will naturally spread out and move up and down within the resin. I actually help it out here a little bit. You could just leave it and it will totally make an awesome pattern, but I let it sit there for a second and then I pour more resin over the top and it creates an even cooler pattern. So we're kind of mixing the Petri dish method with pouring additional resin over the top. And it gave me this super awesome multi-layered effect that normally you just don't get. The Petri dish method is super cool, but this kind of creates this spider galaxy web-like thing. And when I'm pouring it in the cup or the bottom side of the molds, I actually pour a little bit of resin and then put a drop of the alcohol ink and then pour a little bit more resin, kind of creating a layered Petri dish method. Pour some resin over the top, put some of the darker blue, kind of copy the same thing over and over. Pour more resin over the top until the mold is completely filled and good to go. I do the same thing on the other one, except on this one I'm using purple and black as my combos. This one's a shadow to all my goth homies out there. I let it sit there for a second, do the same thing where I pour more of the resin over the top and create this really evil looking spider web color, which was just awesome. And once I added the purple, mm, I was in love with this color and it spread out perfectly. And I thought it was just this nice little combo between the black and the purple. I actually poured more resin on this one, but then I tried something different within the cup. Rather than just doing this kind of Petri swirl thing, I actually kind of did a waterfall version of the Petri method. I poured resin and then I put a lot of the purple on top and poured more resin down so that it would create this kind of flowing waterfall of purple as it goes. And it is just an oddly satisfying portion of the video to watch there. I could watch that over and over. I do a little bit more of the black, do kind of a mini waterfall version with it. And then as it sits there, I put one drop of the purple on the top to create a version of a Petri dish on the very bottom. Now for these smaller kind of cup box molds, they will fit perfectly fine in my pressure pot. The bigger ones will not, but I've got this two layer insert. So I set it in there and what was vitally important is making sure that it is level so much so that I brought out my level to make sure that these were going to sit flat on the top because we're using open face molds. There's a problem that comes with the purple box which I was sad about apparently it wasn't quite level because of the silicone but either way I set them in the pressure pot at 40 psi for 24 hours and while that's curing we can get rolling on the larger rectangular box. I'm actually trying to mimic the dice that I made in my faster resin polishing video that I did last week and I'm going to take this purple foil stuff and mix it up into the kind of silver liquid glitter and clear resin and it's gonna look awesome. I was very excited about it because it wouldn't fit in the pressure pot. I degas the resin by putting it in the vacuum chamber. It's totally possible to do. You just gotta be patient and turn the uh, vacuum on and off to make sure that you're not gonna overflow the bubbles on there and it looks fantastic. The other part of this box, I'm going to make the kind of dark gunmetal that I made from the dice by mixing up some silver mica powder and some black alcohol ink. It makes this super evil looking gunmetal, which is just neato, really. I don't have another word for it. It's Nito. He has a Shatterkai Arcane Trickster Rogue, and so this color combo works very well. It would also look phenomenal for a Warlock or just any kind of otherworldly 
character that uses some out of this world magic. It's very alien looking. I take a toothpick and go along the edge of the mold to very, very slightly mix the silver with the transparent part. I'm not trying to create a mixture. I'm just trying to create some tiny swirls so that there's not a hard line between the two colors. After that sets for 24 hours, we can now take them out of the molds. I would wait at least 48 hours before I do anything to them, but you can take them out of the molds if you need to. I peel the molds back and wow, that Petri dish color for the purple and black is phenomenal. You can see the wood grain on the bottom of it and it's just exactly what I was looking for. The contrast between the wooden looking sides and the very clear bottom, which was the top of the mold and where we did the pour is so cool. I like the very different look to it than what you would normally be able to buy. It's very handmade. And for what the black and purple look like, the blue looks even better. It's got this kind of sharp little edges on the side, which we'll take care of here in a minute. The wood grain is even more pronounced on the bottom of the lid and on the side, and it makes this kind of watery coral reef look. And the bottom of the actual cup portion is just so good. Both of these came out phenomenally in terms of looks, but they do have some problems, which I'll get to in a minute. But now let's take the rectangular box out. It has the same problem of trying to get it out, but y'all, I was not prepared for how good this thing looks as a dice tray and box combo for him. This is the ultimate gift. It is so good looking, and I cannot wait to package this with the dice. It has some extra resin spillover, which is totally easy to just take care of with some clippers. And you can actually see the layer between the dragon skin and the sort of clear here. You can see they held together just fine and the bottom part looks just as good. It's got a nice little wood grain on the side of it and the inside is just so clear looking. It goes together just so perfectly and I was very, very happy with this. Now with some of the issues that I have on these. Because it was handmade, those little jagged parts on the top are very pronounced and it would take a lot of sanding to actually get rid of them. I like them. I think it looks more handmade, but if you wanted to get rid of them, you can. And I am actually going to take this wood grain and clean it up just a little bit. It's a little bit more raised than I would like it to be. So I'm going to take some Zona paper, just some of the uh, higher grit stuff and polish off just the edges of it. I'm not trying to get rid of the wood grain. I'm just trying to kind of clean it up so it's not as rough on the outside. Now I could do the same thing here. I actually use the pottery wheel as a makeshift lathe to do some faster sanding on the side. Same thing, not trying to get rid of anything except on the top lid there. I actually do polish that to a nice clear shine, which I'll show you here in a minute. All said and done with these things, they look super good. And the jagged parts, I actually do really like. They're not sharp because you can kind of sand those off and I did a little bit on the edges so that they're not painful or anything, but it makes it look handmade. There are a billion resin molds that you can buy for boxes online, but if you're trying to make something handmade, make it look handmade. And this thing works great for an additional dice tray and it sounds great. Those are some nice sounding click clacks and it just sounds really good between the resin. It holds about six sets of dice in there or you could even maybe put a few minis if you held them sideways. So this box I call A-OK. -okay. The purple and black box, you can see the difference here on the lid. It is very non-level. I think when I poured the silicone, I didn't care as much about the silicone being level and that caused problems because when I pressurized the resin, it was level. The blue box turned out fantastic. I like that you can still see the wood grain on the side and under the lid, but the top and bottom are very, very polished and the ring in the center like I said, I polished it up to a near glass-like shine as well. I like the idea that I can pour resin for a set of dice and then pour excess resin like this into a box and I can give that set of dice away as a gift with a box that matches that resin because these tiny little cylinder boxes, they only hold one set of dice so they're perfect for giving away one set. Unfortunately, because this purple and black one is just not worth the effort to clean up and sand down that lid, I might as well just make a new lid and maybe I will at some point, but if not, I'll just give this away sometime in the future. A quick thank you to the patrons who help support this channel as we look at some glamour shots of all the boxes and the dice with them. It even is so good looking that it makes the kind of failed purple box look good in their glamour shots. So thank you to all the patrons who help support this one. I really think that this is a fun project to do because you're able to kind of make something that nobody else has. Any sort of imperfection you have in the silicone and lids, don't take that as a, ah oh, man, I messed it up. Take that as a, that's a Ribonator special. Nobody else's box looks like that. I made that. Too often are we looking for perfection, and sometimes we should just look for what is fun and unique, and that's what I love about these boxes. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned something, maybe subscribe if you want to learn some more, or if you want to make your own dice to put inside resin boxes like these. That's mostly what we do on the channel is make dice, and we make other tabletop terrain type things for D&D and other tabletop RPGs. I hope you all are staying safe during this chaotic time, and maybe this video provided you some much needed entertainment when everything is kind of bleak out there. So I hope that you are staying safe staying happy, and I hope that you have a fantastic day.